I'm David Kerr, Professor of Cancer Medicine at the University of Oxford. Um, uh, there's an interesting announcement recently by the FDA um, that we have approved a combination of Lonserf and Bevacizumab in the third-line treatment of advanced metastatic colorectal cancer. Uh, this builds on the results of the Sunlight study that were um, published in the New England Journal of Medicine um, a month or two ago. Um, what, what it shows is that the combination of uh, Lonserf and Bevacizumab compared to Lonserf alone extends overall survival and average by around three months, statistically significant. Um, and certainly the authors have argued that it would be clinically meaningful. The uh, chemotherapy was pretty well tolerated, but as is the case with Lonserf, there was a very significant degree of neutropenia, which was worse in the combination arm. 45% of patients approximately suffering grade 3, grade 4 neutropenia. And there was quite widespread usage of um, bone marrow supporter factors, the GGMCSF, to try to protect against the a very significant neutropenia and therefore a risk of neutropenic fever hospitalization that, that tends to be associated with lung serve. Um, um, I think uh, uh, an important announcement, um, one that moves the field further forward, but what will be interesting to see in the United Kingdom um, what our health technology assessment um, outfit, NICE, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, um, make of these benefits. Um, when we look at the cost effectiveness of any um, new cancer treatment in the United Kingdom, we have the, um, a, a program of approval by the regulatory authorities, uh, the MHRA. Now that we are out of Europe, we are distinct from the European Medicines Agency, so we have our own regulatory authority. Um, so they will review the results, as have the, F as, as have the FDA. But then it would be a secondary review about the cost effectiveness of this combination and whether set against other um, health priorities, the uh, benefits, the, the overall survival benefits that we've seen merit the additional cost associated with the addition of bevacism are yet to be done. Um, but this two-step process that we have is something which is likely to be mirrored increasingly in um, other countries, which is an element of a socialized healthcare system. So having a, an HTA approach um, following upon regulatory approval, I think will become increasingly common the approach that NICE takes, uh, I think, is transparent. Um, um, it does allow us to compare apples and oranges. Uh, by that, I mean it allows us to compare the relative health benefits of something like a uh, hip replacement in an elderly person with the benefits of uh, um, associated with a new cancer drug. So, so everything is relative, and therefore it allows those who make decisions about how a socialized healthcare budget is spent to decide which it is they would prioritize uh, to set limits, if you like, to see if the health economic benefits are, are above such and such a cost, then we would argue that our healthcare system would not prioritize those um, against other um, perhaps more cost-effective health interventions. So a, a, a lovely trial by some great friends of mine, positive results, um, good news with the approval by the FDA, but a little way to go yet in the United Kingdom before we'll see if we'll be using that combination um, aiding the clinical front line, as it were. Um, but my colleagues who conducted the trial are to be commended. I think third-line metastatic colorectal cancer is an increasingly interesting area. Um, this is the first, I think, um, clinically important um, uh, news that we've had for some time. But there's a ton of activity going on, particularly with microsatellite stable colorectal cancer, seeing if it's possible to manipulate the immune microenvironment to, to make those immunologically cold tumors hot and, and therefore potentially attractive to um, immune manipulation. So uh, I, I'm here of increasing um, uh, both basic translational 
and clinical research and an area in which I think we'll hear more of um, over the coming 12, 24 months. Um, thanks for listening. I'd be very keen to hear um, how you, um, what approach you take to these data. Are you going to immediately incorporate the businesses of lab into your um, clinical routine? Um, that will you have to do a cost-effective analysis? I'd be really interested in your comments. Um, as always, Medscapers, thanks for listening. Um, for the time being, ahoy. Thank you.